Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I am Darren, and today I'm gonna do something I haven't done in a while, and I don't know, I think I did it once on the uh, channel, but we're gonna do some New York strips. These are actually dry-aged New York strips. We're gonna cook these sous vide at 131 for about four hours, and then we're gonna sear them up with a mayo sear on the Kamado Joe soapstone. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, Getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chillin' from fire and water. All right, guys. Like I said, you know, I might have. I think I've done a video on this before with the mayo sear. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I know I've done New York strips before, of course. These are the ones I dry aged in the Umai dry bags, and this is from the steer that I bought a couple months back. So these will be um, dry or uh, sous vide at 131, but they've been dry aged. They're frozen solid, so they're going to thaw out in the sous vide bath. But I am going to do a mayo sear. You know that was a big thing a couple of years back, and people you know still that are new to sous vide may not quite still understand what a mayo sear can do. Since mayo is an emulsion, it's not just an oil by itself. It does have the egg in there. It tends to form a, uh, a little bit better crust or a different type of crust than if you were just cooking it in oil or butter. So um, we're going to show you how you can do that the right way. I've seen too many people coming into the Facebook groups and forums and stuff like that where they just glob a whole bunch of mayo on there and it looks like a chicken fried steak when they're done. And that's not the proper way to use a mayo sear. So we're going to show you the proper way to do it. And um, then we're going to sear it up on the Kamado Joe soapstone, which the soapstone is kind of like a piece of granite. And with Kamado Joe, they actually, they, it's a half a moon. So you got two, I'm going to have two of them, two half moons. And it's a thick, good uh, inch and a half, two inches thick of soapstone, which is kind of like a granite. And the reason that it produces a good sear is because it has a really good thermal retention. It really... Uh, you know holds the temperature of that so when you put something on there to sear it's holding the temperature in the stone a lot of times if you're using cast iron or steel as soon as you put the cold meat on a hot grate that that grate gets cold right away so um, you know it, it doesn't really do a really good sear so what this does is actually it holds that temperature when you put that steak on there it may drop it just a little bit but since it's a really thick thermal mass, it holds the temperature a lot better. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that when we get into it and get these steaks out of the sous vide. So I'll be back in a few. All right, guys, so you see I got my fire going. Those torches really do get it hot really quick. So I'm still going to take some time to get this a little bit hotter, but I'm going to put the soapstone on. I kind of want to show you what the soapstone looks like. As you can tell, like I said, it's a big chunk of stone here, and it's flat, so it works good as a griddle-type uh, cooker. So we're going to put that one on one side. Here's my other one. And these are accessories that you can buy on Amazon. Um, anywhere you buy Kamado Joe products, uh, Atlanta Grill Company, this one, the barbecue, uh, several barbecue places online. I think uh, All Things Barbecue is one of them. There's a few places, but uh, there are the soapstone. They sell them in, in one piece, so you can buy just a half of one, or you can buy two of them, so you can have a full surface like this. This is the classic size Kamado Joe. So this is going to heat up. Like I said, since it's you know really thick, it's a good inch and a half thick of solid soapstone. It's going to take a while for that to heat up. So I got about maybe 45 minutes to an hour before my steaks are done. So it's going to give this plenty of time to heat up. So we're going to let that heat up, and I will be back. All right, guys, I got my steaks out of the sous vide bath, and I want to check on my soapstone here. Now, the Kamado Joe thermometer says it's at 400. Now, I know that soapstone 
is a lot hotter than that. And I'm going to use my uh, infrared here to uh, test that out. And right there, it's over 650. Right about 650. This one's uh, right about 600. So yeah, we're doing pretty good. So I can actually turn the vent down, vent down a little bit on here. Because I really don't need it quite that hot. I'm just glad I got it hot enough to sear. And that's one of the things you got to make sure when you're searing on a flat surface like that, you get it hot enough. All right, so let's go show you how we're going to put the mayo on here. All right, guys, since I want to kind of do a little close up so you can see, I just took these out of the bath so they're still a little wet. We're going to pat these dry just like we normally would when we're searing a steak. Let's make sure to get as much moisture off of here, just water, as we can. And then once we get all that, I'll remove the from the paper towel because I don't want the paper towel to absorb the uh, mayo when we put it on. So just make sure you get them nice, nice patted dry. Now I'm going to season these. They were seasoned uh, beforehand, before they went into sous vide with salt, pepper, and garlic. But I'm going to season them with my black garlic coffee steak rub. And we're going to put that on after we put the mayo on. So this is how I'm going to do the mayo. Don't use a butter knife. Use a basting brush. And you don't need to put a lot of it on. It just needs a really thin, thin coat. So don't glob it on. Make sure that it's as evenly coated as possible when you put it on. If you got clumps of it, it's going to it's going to you know chunk up and it's going to be like a batter because like I said this has egg in it so it's going to treat it like a like a frying type batter if you get it all and clunked up so you just really take this basting brush and just baste it on like you were painting the wall just like I said get it as even as possible try to get it in every spot where you're going to sear it so you can get it on the sides if you want to. But just make sure wherever you got it, you don't have a big clump of it or a big gob of it anywhere. And if you've ever seen any pictures of people that have done them, you know, amateurs or people that have never done the Maneo Sear before and don't know how to do it, you'll see what I'm talking about. They got big caked on clumps of battery type looking stuff some people might like it that way but personally if you're going to do a sear you want a nice thin thin coat of this stuff on there and it does make a difference to a nice crust do you have to do this every time no to me it's personally I can do it just as well, have a nice decent crust by doing uh, duck fat spray or something like that. So that's it guys, I mean pretty simple, just make it as thin, as thin as you can and then just go back once more before you put it on. I'm going to do the other side and then we're going to toss it on the grill, but like I said, use a basting brush and just get it as thin as you can, get it all covered in every spot that you're going to be grilling putting on that flat top surface so just make sure you get a nice thin thin coat all right i'll do the back end and i'll see you over at the grill hey guys i forgot to uh season these up show you what i'm doing here i'm going to use my black garlic coffee rub you can check that out in the uh link up here in the uh i card uh, just a nice even coat doesn't have to be really thick because we did all already season these with the salt pepper and garlic so this is just going to give it a nice color all right i'll see you at the grill all right guys this is ready and my surfaces are over 600 degrees i'm going to put a little uh, spray oil on there these um, soap stones like i said they're going to hold their heat really well so this shouldn't take very long at all to get a decent crust on both sides and I'm going to make sure that not just on the 
the two flat surfaces. Make sure you get your edges as well. But this is a, a really super fast sear, super hot. Uh, these are going to be done in just a minute, and I'll see you over on the cutting board. We'll uh, open one of these up so you can take a look at it. All right, guys, these are done. And as you can tell, they've got a really nice crust on them. Let's see if you can see that. Try to get it up there really close to you without dropping it. Check out that crust. That is awesome. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and get a picture while I'm here of that. Just so people can see what a great crust that is. That is a pretty awesome crust, if I don't say so myself. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these open so you guys can see just how medium rare they are. Because that's the sight everybody wants to see. Look at that. End to end, medium rare. Perfect crust. You got to try it, guys. Like I said, the mayo crust is a thing. I'm going to go ahead and take a bite. Mm -mm -mm. Nice and juicy. Amazing. Amazing stuff, guys. You need to try it. Try the mayo sear with the sous vide, New York strip. You won't regret it. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Follow me on the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Follow the Fire and Water Cooking YouTube channel, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.